Um, we now move on to Diana Edmonds and her colleague uh, Rebecca Gedeking. Uh, they are from uh, Greenwich uh, Leisure Limited, GLL, uh, and Diana is head of libraries there. Um, for me, the interesting thing about GLL is that they, you will have heard a huge amount about um, libraries in the UK and their general burning down and, and closures. Uh, Greenwich Leisure Limited, as I'm sure uh, you'll hear from Diana, is an organisation, a non-profit, uh, which is taking over and running library services. So not through volunteers, but through a professional body. Um, um, Diana herself has a strong background in libraries, having been uh, worked in academic libraries, uh, university libraries, London School of Economics, public libraries like Aberdeen in Scotland, um, and the Tate Gallery. Um, and she's also worked in the private sector uh, in companies that are, are serving uh, public libraries. I got to know Diana, I won't say how long ago, but it's nine years ago. Uh, when she was working at Harrogate Library, which was a failing library service. And I think it's to Diane's credit that um, she turned around uh, a library service which the Audit Commission said had no hope of improvement and scored no stars, uh, turned it into one of the most popular library services in the country, uh, for which she was uh, given a, a national award uh, to her credit. So I'll hand over to Diana and Rebecca. Thank you. Can we have the... I was much amused when I saw Stephen's slide. I actually misread it. Um, I, I read all the things about book clubs and books and stuff. And, and then I saw this word beginning with M. And I'm quite a lazy reader. And I just assumed it's their neat ring. And I thought this was the end product for the poor librarian who was faced with all these tasks. So I was much relieved when I actually realised it actually just said magazines. So uh, I'm glad that our librarians don't have me brains in the middle of the day. Um, what we'd like to talk to you today is um, about our experience of taking digital responsibility. So we feel that libraries in the 21st century uh, need to take action to accept their digital responsibility. That they need to accept that they are part of a world in which they are supporting their customers in obtaining access to digital resources and also supporting them in giving skills wherever required to enable them to use the resources effectively. So that's really what I'd like to talk to you today about. Now just a quick note about the company that we work for. Um, we are, as Robin said, a charitable social enterprise. So that means that this business is owned by the people who work for it. So it's a very large worker cooperative, if you like. Um, and we manage over 100 leisure centres. So the look of a GLL person is not like myself and Rebecca. They're mostly tall, thin men. And they're really just kind of, they all wear the same uniform. And, and it's really like working in the Navy, we think. So, um, we're slightly unusual and they're very kind of intrigued that they now have librarians in their midst and, and they kind of wonder what extra facilities librarians might need to, to be provided with. So it's quite entertaining for us. We're in quite a good position to wield power far above the numbers of, of our library staff. At the moment we manage two library services in London and that's in the Royal Borough of Greenwich and in the London borough of Wandsworth. So we have 26 library buildings right now. And these areas that we serve are an intriguing mix of very affluent and hugely economically deprived. And that's what London really is like, perhaps like many urban centres. Significant wealth and unbelievably poverty unbelievable poverty exist literally side by side and so our customers may have lots of money may have no money at all um, and they all come in and, and use these library services and so the kind of thing um, that they might be looking for is they might be looking for a job so if they are economically deprived they might be looking for a job if they're affluent they might be looking for a job 
Um, but many of the people that we serve are job seekers, and we know that because they ask for our help um, and we support them. They may be migrants. We have huge immigrant populations in London, um, and these people speak all sorts of different languages and, and have all the interest that migrants do in keeping in touch with the place they came from and the families they have left behind. So a real desire to be online and communicate. Simply people who just want to use a PC. And these can be very different ages. Um, there are a lot of young people in our libraries. Between 18 and 25, I would say, is probably the highest percentage of users because they want to study and they need IT to study and they may not have that facility. Um, and a number of them have disabilities. I was interested by the references to people with disabilities. And we are very conscious that we don't always provide the right facilities for people who have disability. And that's something we're working on right now. But I think it is important to stress that even those people who are affluent, perhaps because they've never had a chance to use IT, uh, or never had any education to use IT, can be digitally deprived. And typically those would be older people who simply haven't had the opportunity but now have the desire to perhaps see photographs of their grandchildren, something like that, or order shopping that can be delivered to them. So um, a really interesting mix of people. And so what we offer is, is very similar to what Stephen had described. The People's Network is what we call it in the UK, which really means that everybody has the right to go into a public library and for free gain access to the internet to use PCs. And we also provide plan printing and scanning capability. Now, what I think we should say is that when we took over Greenwich Libraries, the kit that we were presented with was over 10 years old. Access was unbearably slow. You really didn't need a, a medal in patience if you were willing to sit there and wait till your website loaded up. And the, the real complaint was that the website, having got there, groaned and died before you. And that, that was really the end of your session. So lots of libraries in the UK don't have very good capabilities um, for people. So these are very rarely new machines. And what we felt was that until we could get good kit, good access, fast access, that really we weren't doing anything at all to touch this problem. And so we have managed to gain from our own resources, from GLL's profits, um, well, just under 500,000, just under half a million pounds to invest in these resources. Um, and so we have completely new kit across the board and a guarantee that this kit will be renewed every three years. So we feel that that's really very important, and that's the same model that we've followed into the next authority in Wandsworth, and as part of our bid price, that was costed in. So we feel it's very important that the actual physical offer should be something that you want to use, and not something which is frankly decrepit. Um, the other thing that we offer in every library is wireless, free wireless access, for anybody with laptops, smartphones, tablets. And we also do allow you to plug your um, bit of kit in. We were talking about this over lunch. Um, local authorities have a real concern that you know, some nasty virus is going to be magically spread by sticking a plug in a wall. Um, and we find that's rarely the case, and we've not had it yet. So we're very happy. We arrange the furniture so you can get easy access to the plugs. So anyone wanting to plug their laptop in, just head for Greenwich or Wandsworth and you'll be, you'll, you'll be unaccosted in our regime. Now having got the actual kit there, what we feel is also that we need to support the customer. And so that's really the next thing that we're working on. I'm very interested to have heard Stephen's paper and we would be delighted to take up the offer and, and get our staff using the resources there. We are very aware that um, our own staff don't necessarily have all the skills that we would want them to have. You know, our own staff are an interesting mixture of the average population. So some of them are young, fantastic 
who have no problem at all with computer literacy, just great. Some of the older staff may not have had those opportunities. And so what we've been doing is looking at the staff's needs so that we first of all train them up in IT. Um, and secondly, we are now starting to put staff through teaching qualifications so that they can actually teach the customers. And increasingly we're running regular classes, so every library will have a regular class for people who want to improve their IT skills uh, and gain digital confidence. So that's, um, again, starting to work really well. Um, in the UK we have a particular week, Get Online Week, and the libraries are gearing up to make sure that the customers know what the offer is. I guess we really want to make sure that our libraries are smart libraries. And so, as well as the People's Network machines, we try all the time to get a range of technology in there because we think it's important that customers can use technology in a safe environment where there is lots of support, nobody's going to laugh at you, and, and it's just a bit of fun. So, we have iPads, we've just got an iPad table, which is unbelievable fun and attracts all sorts of people because it's just such a you know, large bit of IT kit sitting there just waiting to be used. And so we're finding lots of take up there. Things like sound showers that you can sit in. This year we were very fortunate, the Arts Council, which is now responsible for libraries in the UK, um, gave us a lot of funding. And one of the things was to allow us to have a resident poet who made recordings of his poems and you can stand under our sound shower and listen to our poet um, talking about Greenwich and the Greenwich way in which we, we did. So all this type of technology, RFID equipment, ones and so on, we just think it's so important that libraries are becoming um, technology hubs that they're places that people can use and create together. So we just want technology to rub off onto our customers. And we feel that our responsibility is really to make libraries technology hubs, um, making available a range of technology products to enable our customers to become more digitally literate and just really to have a bit of fun. You know, it's, it's really you know, good fun using all of this. So we wouldn't want our customers just to come in and, and have this, you know, straight learning experience. We want them to be able to enjoy the situation. And that's what they appear to do. One of the things that we have worked on is a library lab. And that's really a joint venture with our own suppliers. Um, and is a place where we can work on developments with those suppliers. Um, because otherwise we feel that we as librarians don't have any input to the actual IT systems which are being developed for us. We feel that we are the recipients rather than the participants in this development process. And so the Library Lab has been very effective in allowing us to say, well, we would really like this. We would like to be able to have a kiosk, for instance, uh, where you can print, where you can pay. Um, this kind of thing. And, and we found that this has worked extremely well with our suppliers. And soon we're going to have a mobile library lab, um, which will tour the libraries of the UK, we hope, and, and demonstrate a range of products. I'm going to let my um, colleague, Rebecca, move on here. Okay. Um, so as well as the physical offer, having the IT equipment, and having the platform to demonstrate new ideas, we also thought it was really important to have a virtual offer. Um, we felt that GLL and public libraries have a responsibility to reach out to anybody who might not be able to visit a physical library, and also to provide library services for the digi digital community, which is really growing. Um, our current online offer is that we have a 24 seven library where you can access the library management system so the catalogue, borrower records, um, a range of online resources for studying, for pleasure, just for general research. And we've got online information regarding physical libraries and events that are going on and good news stories of events that have already happened. We would like to develop that offer 
and make it a bit different. So we want to increase our online presence via social media, um, but we also want to look at a new, um, I guess, craze that's happening at the moment with everyone doing digital streaming events. Now, GLL held their first one on the 26th of September, and the pictures you can see there are of uh, Cressida Cal, who is a children's author and wrote books about training dragons. So um, it was a very fun day. Um, but over 600 schools and public libraries worldwide were able to access that and watch it online at live as it was happening. Um, what we'd like to do, perhaps, is to create a bank of authors wherever they speak across the world so that everyone can access that. So you've got access to author visits without necessarily having been there. Um, <coughs> moving on from what Diana mentioned earlier about having Arts Council funding, um, that was quite a new trial for us as well. We had an online author in residence. And again, that's something that could be developed. Uh, the author tweeted, um, you know, developing Skype sessions with question and answers. Uh, there's a big, big possibility there to make it a very different kind of virtual library and reach a different audience. Um, another element of that would be developing online book clubs. I know that you know, a lot of those already happen via social media, but things like Skype and um, FaceTime can really change the way that those operate. And that's what we're developing at the moment. And I'll pass you back to Nan. Okay. Um, I just wanted to finally say what difference ICT makes um, in, in a situation where we're forever being told that visits and transactions in libraries are declining. Um, visits to Woolwich Library, which is the large library in the centre of town, increased by 58% last year. Now that's pretty impressive and a lot of people came in simply because they want the IT offer. And on Sundays now, so just to give you a kind of idea of how many people that is, um, it's not, you know, it's not kind of five increased to ten. We're now getting around 5,000 people in the library in one day, uh, which is amazing. Our main expenditure is extra chairs. So um, I'd encourage you all to move in that direction. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. Um, yeah, great. I mean, we're, we're, you, know, you know we're fans of uh, your approach to public libraries uh, and your creative, creative ideas. Um, any questions, burning questions for Diana? Yep. Okay. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't want to, to uh, go into, uh, let's say, confidential information or things like that. I understand your, your uh, self-revenue generating organization. So it will be nice if possible without getting into confidential information to give a, an idea what kind of incomes do you have, what service you charge or you apply for EU funds or what happening, how you succeed uh, to, to support all those things in an admirable way. Thank you. Yes. I mean, you can see, I'm sure you can find this anyway. Basically, when we take over a library service, the way that local authorities fund their libraries is that they'll have a block of money for the libraries, the revenue budget, but then there's another bit of money, or quite a lot of money. So, um, if you look at the figures on Lincolnshire, which is a county, and there's been a lot of discussion, um, they say that the budget for the libraries is six million and they've got to cut that by a third. But actually, there's another four million that is called the corporate recharge, which is all about what is spent by the local authority to support that service. So that four million means that there are people who are hiring staff, paying staff, uh, running the communications, all sorts of stuff like that. So that's in the corporate recharge. When the local authority outsources, it's very likely that they're just going to cut a line through that. That's not going to be in your discussions. So what you're usually asked to look at is the revenue budget. Now, in, um, in the authorities that we have worked in, typically the requirement is to say between 25% and, well, between a, between a quarter and a third of the budget you have to save 
take it over because those are the kind of, look, of, of uh, cuts that they're looking at. Um, and so we will work within that. Part of what we will ask for is a management fee because we have to have a management fee in order to be able to run this. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking to take a management fee, but usually that's out of that cut revenue budget. Now all I can tell you is that if you work this well, if you look at it systematically and you're really tight on your costs and you have good agreements with the way that you buy, that it works. So in November we will be putting out a, a notice in Wandsworth that we'll be extending the library hours. Now that's not because we're magic, it's just because we're looking at it really systematically how can we get this rotor, the staff rotor, to work? How can we get as many people in the libraries as possible rather than in the back office? So that's, that's the kind of way. Now, what we're also always looking for, and if there's anybody here with any funding pots, then that would be great to meet you afterwards. But basically, we'll look for money. So we're, we're working to see if we can bring in money. So. So the money from the Arts Council, which I think the total budget was about 118,000 project from the Arts Council, which enabled us to do a big arts project called the Great Greenwich Whale. Now, a fantastic project, again, lots of digital stuff. Um, so we'll be looking to pull in money from any place that we can pull it, really. Um, and we do do some kind of fundraising things, like we sell nice things in the libraries. You know, you can buy a mug with a penguin cover on, or you know, you can buy a bookmark or something. But but really, we're looking for that kind of, you know, we're trying to make money as well to bring into the service. And the money that we got for the IT came from the profits from another part of the company. So we were able to draw down those profits and invest them back into the community. So it seems to work. There we go. Okay. Too much detail, I fear. Thanks. Thanks, Dan.